in order to look at the number plates of trucks coming into be coming into London to try to figure out whether or not they were trucks that had been stolen and therefore were likely to be car bombs. That's how it all began. Now, of course, there's a CCTV, CCTV camera on every street corner. Now, is that a good thing? It doesn't really help with arrests or that much. Ah, it, it might, it might not. Surely, surely only the people who've done something wrong need to be worried, right? No. Why not? Just because um, you know, Why? Just why? because you haven't done something wrong doesn't mean you do not have the right to not have people knowing that you did it. <laughs> <laughs> That's way too many double negatives. <laughs> people have the right to privacy. Why? Don't answer. I don't care. Figure it out on your, on your own time. But if you are going to run an argument about privacy, tell me why the hell privacy matters. Okay? Don't assume that rights are fundamental and are real just because you've been told rights are fundamental and real. <coughs> they are. But in debating land, you've got to explain why they are fundamental and real. <laughs> For some people, that should be mandatory. <laughs> Um, what haven't we talked about yet? Actual fear. Media, okay. Um, who wanted to talk about the media and why? Someone tell me why we're yeah. talking about the media. Yeah. Yeah. Because the media's had a massive uh, influence in the public perception of terror and its extent. Sure. So, one of the great sort of ideas that I just came across when I was preparing this talk was why not create some kind of restriction on free speech about reporting terrorism? Because then you cut out the vital element. There's no fear. If people don't know what's happened, well, they don't know how horrible what has happened is, surely that's a great way of stopping fear. I know there are counter arguments. There's a limit on how much interactivity I'm going to allow. <laughs> free speech. Ah, free speech. Another fundamental right. Tell me why it matters in your own time. Not now, not now, in your own time. Okay. Other ways of stopping terrorism. Amnesty. Would it work? Could it work? That depends. It depends on the motivation. It depends on how willing this person to come across it. It depends on how much information they have. How are most terrorist organizations structured? Cells. Cells. What's a cell? Who said cell? Someone down here said it. <laughs> no, it said secretively. You might have missed it. No, no, no. Someone said cell. Small groups when nobody knows the full extent of the organization to protect their... Right. Own so, own. you know, there's a limit on how much each individual knows because they are they're sort of compartmentalized. This group only knows this group, only knows this group, only knows this group, only knows this group, and, you know, there's a central clearing point. So really, unless this person decides to walk and you give him amnesty, that's not going to be much use. What is the likelihood of this person walking as opposed to one of these people? Lower. Lower. Substantially lower. Right. So it may not work. How about assassination? How about just wiping out this guy? There are still lots of other people out there. And you know, they've still got all that training. They've probably still all, that, all, got, all got all those cool chemicals, you know. They can, they can still use that. That might not work either. Now, what happened in Bali after the bombings? <coughs> lots of things happened. That's, that's an unfair question. One of the things that happened was Australia began funding more and more for Indonesian counterintelligence services and, you know, Indonesian special police and all that sort of stuff. It's what we've been doing in Pakistan for years. This is what economists call a perverse incentive. If I'm give, being given money every time bad stuff happens in my country, and I'm a member of the secret services like the ISI in Pakistan, what am I going to do? What is it in my interest to have happen? You want more terrorist attacks, yeah. because that means more training, more funding, more junkets to the US, yeah? Or you just want more terrorists. Just know. like in the, the rounding up of random people in Afghanistan. Sure, or you just bring in, that's right, you, you need results. I have a quota, I'm going to just bring in more terrorists. I'm going to bring in more people who speak funny. <laughs> okay, so in terms of, you know, practical solutions, every one of those has a problem. I've run out of things to say. Does anyone else want me to talk about something? No, you're done. No. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Okay, parting thoughts. It's complicated. It's always contextual. It's probably happened before. Learn history. That's how you become a good debater amongst other things. You learn history, particularly history of obscure parts of the world that no one's ever heard of, that you can use to debates and no one knows anything about, to rebut you on. I highly recommend South America, right? Lots of really
really, really interesting things have happened in South America in the terrorism and security field and in other fields as well. It's also a growth area of the 21st century. It will set you up in good stead for life if you learn about South America. I wish I knew more about it. <laughs> other thoughts. Be clear on who you are. This is the key thing. Go into the debate with a consistent line. Because if you start the debate sounding like Donald Rumsfeld, and then gradually begin to agree with Philip Sands, QC over here, who keeps talking about due process, your line's getting weaker and weaker. <coughs> if you're going to be Donald Rumsfeld, you can be Donald Rumsfeld, but either be definitely sure of why you're allowed to say the outrageous things you're about to say, or just moderate a little bit and be a bit more nuanced in what you're going to stand for throughout the debate. But be clear about what you think the problem is, what you think the causes of that problem are, and how your model and your arguments <coughs> prove those problems and prove that they are the optimal solution. So that's really what you want to do. You want to make sure that you know what the problems are, you can prove they're the problems, and you can prove that you have got the best solution for those problems. Any questions? <coughs> no. Okay. I did a very good job or a very bad job. I think it's probably the latter. Thank you for your indulgence. He's been the quarterfinalist at Worlds, quarterfinalist at Australs. Basically, he's not only one of Melbourne Uni's best, but one of the world's best. So there's always stuff you can learn off him. Um, so hopefully you guys managed to get a bit out of that. Um, I'm now going to hand you over to Michelle and Beth, who are going to tell you about tonight's competition. Okay, guys. Before we give you what you're going to do, you the top and everything, we just need you to come down and tell us about two things. First of all, if you've arrived in the last sort of half hour or so and you haven't given us your name, we need you to come down in front. The other thing is, because we only have a limited number of coaches available this evening, if you'd like to opt out of having that and your team doesn't have one, please come down and tell us just so we can give them to the people who we know definitely want. So if you come down now, if you want to of this Alright, we're going to go through the teams one more time. If your name is up there in the team, that's because you have been moved to a different team. There's only about four or five people. It's just to ensure that everyone has, you know, at least three members that they can debate with. So just keep an eye on your name. We'll just go through this. Please, I'm going to roll it down slowly. If you write down which team you're in if you don't know already, and just make sure you Okay, everyone. We're going to give you four in the room first. Okay, so coaches, take note of who you're coaching where and where you're actually. Like last week, the affirmative team gets the room to crack in, the negative team has to crack outside the room. And please make sure once again the negative team don't crack too far because you do want your coach to be able to go. What would I do to send the coach with you as you leave that room? 